The 2003 season is officially in the rearview mirror, but we still got a few more things we need to wrap up before we head on to 2004. As you guys can already see, I've changed up the paint scheme. The paint scheme is definitely in the uh, spirit of testing. So we are definitely in a preseason test mode, but I have uh, come up with an idea as to what we're going to do for 2004 with the preseason stuff. All right. Uh, I can't wait to actually go into details on this, but it's going to be awesome. Again, if you somehow missed the last race, which was epic uh, for everybody else but me, Mark Martin is our current points champion over Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, and Dale Jarrett. And we did wind up sealing the 15th place position just above Ward Burden. So we did finish 15th in our standings. But that's not really all we're here for, is it? Let's go ahead and hit new season to figure out what's coming up next. Mike Skinner and Kyle Petty have retired, which is surprising because sometimes in NASCAR Thunder 04, I have seen the 57 car, which is Kevin LePage, retire immediately as well. So for him not to retire this season means that Kevin LePage decided to come back for one more. So Mike Skinner has been retired and has been replaced by Chase Montgomery, while Kyle Petty has retired and has no replacement for that number 45 car. In case you were wondering, Mike Skinner did all 36 races, had no top fives or top tens, and finished about an average of 37.7 and finished 41st in the standings, despite starting all the races. Kyle Petty, uh, much the same. He started every race, had a best finish of 16th, but finished 34th in the standings. It's uh, rough to think about what's going on with uh, Kyle. So moving on, I am going to look at this to quote unquote change settings just so you guys can see. We ran that whole entire series on 10% legend difficulty, no career tips and yellow flags were on with damage being normal. We're going to keep those exact same things. I haven't changed anything. There's no jump cuts. Everything is where it was. I just wanted to make sure I showed you guys that. Gentlemen, start your testing. NASCAR comes out of hibernation to get up to speed for another season. We're bringing you 30 minutes of preseason thunder at Daytona, complete with the usual cast of characters, some fresh faces, and of course, bodies dipped in primer. The defending race champ is there. His ride was a little bumpy. Bud shootout is coming up next, but first we've got to do some testing, some preseason testing. And before that, we also need to talk about the new rules package for the new season. You guys are going to enjoy this one. I don't think anybody else has ever done this. You know, you've seen challenges where people have uh, won the championship without spending money. You've seen situations where people sit here and refuse to upgrade their cars or overhaul them. I want to keep that main core component in this because Without that component, honestly, it doesn't really make any difference. And I think that this would help change it up, especially making it just a little bit more interactive for you guys in the comment section. So are you ready for me to give you some details on it? New for my series, season two, is a new cost cap. All right. And this is based on all my sponsorship winnings from the entire season. As it stands right now, I've made uh, $15,469,000 just on sponsorships alone. Race winnings uh, were also calculated in there for 3.98. That was last season. Over 36 races, the maximum amount that I'm able to spend is $429,000. And that includes the team salary, repairs, and shop additions. Now, keep in mind, I can go up to 4.4. Actually, it was like, four, like 15 million. Uh, 469,000. Since it's not technically 15.5 million, I'm not going to round up because I would usually round up from 15.5 just to call it an even 16. That way I don't have to do as much math. But because of the fact I did not hit that 15.5 million rank rate, it will drop back down to just straight up $15,000. 15 million, sorry. $15 million. So unfortunately, I am going to be missing out on. Uh, maybe an extra million that I could probably use for the season. So I'm only allowed to spend $15.4 million this season. Okay. But I didn't round it up and it doesn't round down. I forgot. You don't round it down if it's below a certain number. 
but you do keep it where it's supposed to be. You just don't round it up. So right now I don't round it up. So we are at $15.4 million for the entire 36 race season. Yes, I'm including the shootout. I'm including the all-star race. I'm including all that. It's just kind of how it has to be. Why? Because I am a crazy, crazy son of a gun, and I really do want to keep upgrading my car, but I want that added pressure of week to week, day to day things. So let's go ahead and jump right on in to our team management screen. First things first, we do have an income of $440,000. That's great. That's actually more than what we're allowed to use throughout the week uh, in a season. Um, oh, all my sponsor prestiges have dropped. Anyways, moving on. And that's why I wanted to make sure I cleared everything I needed to clear last season with overhauling because coming into this season, I had a feeling it was going to be a little bit tougher. So we need to now hire a team, but we need to keep in mind that they need to be under the $429,000 mark every week. Now, that should be very simple to do. Should be. Hopefully. But I it is season two and we theoretically should be getting better crew now that we finish in the top 15 in the standings so let's find out our front tire changer wow that won a lot of money so our more could come in handy he's got the speed and the skill well he's got less speed than naggy but he's got better skill higher potential higher overall hmm First, like I save myself. You know what? We're going to sign the best people and then we can adjust as we go. How about that? We'll sign the best. And then if we are at or close to that budget uh, mark that we have at 429 million or 429,000, then we can look at making the change. Okay. So the best that we can find in the front tire carrier, we need somebody who is fast, but skillful. Flowelling looks like you're here. Oh, hey, these are two guys that we had on our team at the end of the last season. Look at their happiness. Rear tire changer. Um, yeah, Thompson, not Thompson. Thompson, you're uh, you're hired. Already had him too. Uh, rear tire carrier and sour. Yep, sure. Jackman. We need somebody with more skill. He's not as fast, but he's skillful. Hmm. That could actually come to our advantage. You know what? I'll take a chance on the Jackman with more skill. A skilled Jackman is better than an, uh, a fast one because a faster one with less skill could probably make more mistakes. As far as the gas man goes, uh, you know what? Moving that gas can, you need to be a little bit faster. And as far as the catch cam man goes, uh, yeah, we'll take the best that we can find for that. As far as our crew chief goes, we're looking at a pretty decent uh, number of crew chiefs here. We got Lindsay, who doesn't really do that well, Chiang, and we also got Woods. I'm leaning towards, hmm. I'm leaning towards Woods because of how much more balanced he is. Road course will be fine in terms of uh, the crew member skill, but I am seeing that the short track speedway, super speedway and pitting are a little bit better than what I would, you know, expect for a guy in his 76 overall rating. So we'll get Woods. As far as an engine builder goes, we probably won't be building many engines throughout the season because I mean, outside of the fact that we only have 429,000 to use, if we build a new engine, then we have to calculate how long that would take for us to recoup. Plus, we still have to pay our crew. So I don't even know if we're going to build an engine this season. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Um, Efficiency and power are important. Efficiency and power. So that would leave me with um, Leva. I don't really care about the durability of the engines. They're going to get better as time goes on, but I do need somebody with efficiency and power. So that's $21,000. Um, same with the chassis. We just need tire wear and tire grip. And 
Nax has the best tire wear tire grip because of short, although he has the same tire wear, he has less tire grip. So we're gonna go with Nax on that one. And then as far as the fabricator goes, same thing, downforce and drafting are important. This one seems a little bit more dead even between all three of them, but I do like Spangler. It just got a good name. So we're gonna get Spangler. Out of all that, we do have a new chassis builder, engine builder, and crew chief. Fabricator is a returner. Catch can gas, jack, rear tire, everybody else is new. Or everybody else is returning except for the crew chief, engine builder, and chassis builder. Okay. All together, that is $159,000. So that leaves us with, out of 429, um, let's do some quick maps here. Okay, not really. I'm just gonna cheat and use a, um, a calculator for all this because I went to school for something that was not math and I like not having to worry about math. So I'm gonna have to force myself to actually worry about math this season. Can y'all believe I did that to myself? So that leaves me with $270,000 a week. I'm, I'm typing this in from my own notepad over here. So that is 270K a week on repairing overhauling if we need to or building now all things considered in our garage which we really don't need to worry about at this point we did finish a shop edition not chassis but we did finish our bodies so we do have two speedway bodies one super speedway and one generic for example i wish i could tell Oh, it would be nice if I could just see what that could be. But we're currently overhauling things, so we won't know what the impact of this uh, cost cap will be until later. Go figure. Well, let's go ahead and hit the track for preseason. And let's go ahead and see what we can do as the defending race winner. This is before the uh, butt shootout, so I'm going to do a little bit of practice, figure out what we got with the car, and uh, I'll see you guys as soon as I come back. So as you guys probably would have noticed, Practice didn't go so well, or at least testing didn't. We did damage the car in, uh, in testing. Uh, no big deal. We did get the car repaired. We're gonna go ahead and get the car uh, painted up and make it look pretty. And we're gonna go and take on the shootout here at Daytona. That means that the season is ever so closer to becoming into fruition. 2004 is here. I'm looking forward to it. Testing just, you know, sucked a little. But I did get a little bit of good information out of my car. Maybe saving this equipment was a good idea. Can't wait, can we? Now, one more thing we gotta do. Let's just go and make our paint scheme look good right now. And you guys now see what I had been working on in the background. We went with a more uh, different color as you guys know I kind of stuck with like the white and the red and the blue type of scheme throughout most of the season now I did bring some of that back as you can tell from what you can see right now within the door right here within the door right here you can see that there is the blue highlight still in there and then um, on the roof it's kind of hard to see right now but there is a white number with red highlight for that extra pop from the top and the side of the door is gonna have the blue for when it's going by, you'll see the white and the blue. The color that you see on the front is a more of a mixture of green and blue and yellow in such a way that gives it its own unique color. This isn't a color that you can normally get. You have to like kind of play with the sliders and things like that in the paint uh, scheme section to make them you know, what you wanna make them. And then as you can tell on the front end, it's a lot more yellow, but it's really not yellow. It's supposed to be like a more goldish uh, bright a uh, vibrant color you know now that we no longer have the rookie uh, stripe on the back of the car it actually helps so let me give you guys the quick little preview here so as you can see we don't have the rookie stripe on the back so there's still a little bit of yellow i kind of missed the rookie stripe a little bit it was a really cool uh thing to add on into the game that once you're a rookie you get the rookie stripe and then as you progress through the, your career 
you know it, it goes away and you just become like a regular car you know again so that's kind of a thing i miss glad we won the rookie of the year title that makes that all complete um you can't really see the errands or the we care uh safety clean uh sponsors on there because rendering is just god awful in this game so unfortunately you can't really see them against the colors i think they would have really added the extra pop um with this um as well as the decals but as you can tell the car definitely looks a lot better than last season and it has a little bit more personality to it than it did in the past where i just kind of kept it a very basic style you know we were a rookie cure you know season it's a rookie team we were brand new to the series you know we just kind of stuck with the, the the classic colors because we didn't know if we were going to return for a second season you know running a race team is very expensive so we weren't sure if we were going to come back next uh for this season and we did so we decided to break out all the stops and bring out all the good cash make a car that really is memorable unto itself and just kind of really see if we could push the line on some of the coloring you know like i said from this roof of the car here you can tell that there's like a little red number it's a red highlight to the white uh give it that little extra pop under there and then of course it kind of uh, helps with the all pro with the all pro yellow so i tried to kind of blend the all pro yellow into the scheme as well with a little bit of black um i didn't really stay with the black because we ran like way too many black cars last year. Okay, we, we our color car was just too black. So we had to we had to give it a little bit more variety. So Nikon, I'm sorry, but you're just not gonna be fully represented except for maybe in the white. And then of course with the Pontiac logo, you know, the red is in the, uh, in the roof highlight. The blue is on the Pontiac's name. So that's also in the, uh, in the number highlight. So we tried our best to kind of blend all this together. Now, with our brand new car in and ready to go, there's only one more thing left to do. Take on the Bud Shootout. You guys ready for it? I am. Let's head to the racetrack. You guys already know what we're bringing? I don't really need to tell you all that, do I? Green flag, green flag. TNT Sports presents... The 26th running of the Budweiser Shootout, live from Daytona. Tonight, 19 drivers back in the seat under race conditions for the first time in nearly three months. A night when it's hard to tell who is more excited, the competitors or the fans. So the shootout field consists of all pole winners from the previous season. Each driver must make a two-tire pit stop under the green flag during the race. That's going to be new for us. A two-tire green flag pit stop. And we're starting sixth. Well, y'all ready? I am. Let's go. Let's get this 2004 season underway. Oh, we're starting right behind Dale Jr. So we've only got seven laps to really make anything happen. I made an adjustment to the gear ratio. I didn't realize that we were in preset 10. So I did move us down to preset nine. I think I got into Dale Jarrett there a little bit. No big deal. We do got Rusty Wallace right behind us. He's not too happy with us based on what happened last season. But uh, he got away from us a lot. So whatever. We'll figure it out from there. And let's just kind of roll with the punches. Let's see what we got. The car already feels much more competitive than it did in 2003. The 2003 season, horrible. This season, the car feels a little bit better from a body standpoint. Got up to, into Dale Jarrett there twice. No big deal. It's a little bit of paint swapping. Of course, Rusty Walls gets into my door. That guy just hasn't let it go yet, has he? He hasn't let go of 2003 Rockingham uh, at the end of the season. So making the adjustment on the gear ratios probably was a bad idea. I probably should have stayed preset 10 because preset nine is not giving us all the power. It's like we're getting capped out here. So I'll have to make a decision at some point of when to come down pit road. Now was your best lap 
Oh no, Jeff Burton. We're gonna let our rival Rusty Wallace push us a bit here. Looks like some guys are gonna come down pit road this time by. I think we'll pit with them. We have no choice. We can't we can't keep losing the leaders here. So it was a bad idea for me to adjust the gear ratio. Right, left sides only, left sides, left sides, left sides, boys, left sides. Let's get some fuel. Oh, those uniforms look smooth, don't they? Come on, guys, come on. Good job, team. Good job. We're out on time. We're out on time. No big deal. That sun is blinding. I have I have faith in the boys in the ch uh, chassis shop. I do feel like our uh, chassis won't wear out these tires as bad, and that's why I didn't slide them coming in. But I am going to have to readjust the gear ratios for um, the Daytona 500. We cannot run the race with gear ratios like this. I thought I was doing a little cheeky play there. Uh, probably was a good reason why we were in preset 10. Should have stayed pre-10. I'm out here with a very sizable lead over the rest of the field, too. Oh, the 21 is out. Number 18 is inside. Whoa, is that two Fords that lost their motors? Because Jeff Burden lost his engine, and then Ricky Rudd lost his engine. So that's interesting to me. I just got to make qualifying based runs here. We're just we're just qualifying at this point. We're running qualifying trim. We're running as low as we can. I just want the payday for the day uh, for the bus shootout. Nothing. You're clear. Watch the cars coming out of the pits, buddy. Fuel tank ought to be about half empty. Or hello. Who's the race leader? Kurt Bush? We're all around. It's gonna pass you. Thanks. You the man, buddy. Lead the race. Let's widen the margin. You know, to be honest, if it weren't for me taking those two left sides, I do not think I would have caught up to Kurt Bush here. I mean, we're in the lead now, but there's no telling what he could do. I'm going to have to run in the mirror for the last lap here. He'll still be getting up to speed, but he still can, in theory, make a run at me. Oh, I am nervous. 15, Whoa, that was a quick lap. And I still can't see. I just want the win because I want to blow my engine. <laughs> Celebrating. I, I want to blow it. We're low on fuel. Blocking. Blocking. Still blocking. I'm blocking the living mess out of this guy. Come on. Let's get it back to the line. Let's get it back to the line. And... 2004 is already starting off with in a really big way. Yes. Nah, man. Burn it down. Well, I wanted to blow the engine. I ended up running out of fuel instead. Probably for the best, right? <laughs> now that is a smoke show if I ain't seen one. Can't believe it. We're starting off 2004 on a high note. Let's see if I can get into my pit stall here. You think I have enough speed, guys? Ooh, it's gonna be close. Oh yeah, we're, we got plenty. We got plenty. We got plenty of speed. Well, let's just make sure we park it in here perfectly. 
just like that. Ah, we did it. That looks so good, doesn't it? Oh, I'm so happy. All right, let's uh, let's go celebrate. This is the kind of finish the fans love to see. Wow, you know, you're right. That was an incredible finish to an even more incredible race. This NASCAR Wincy Cup Series is so exciting to watch. The 53 car never even got a scratch in this race. Yeah, you never quite know what's going to happen in these NASCAR Winston Cup races. When you finish a race and your car still looks brand new, you've done one heck of a job as a driver. The 53 car now has one less friend in the garage area. Well, it certainly looks that way. I'm not sure who started everything, but it should be fun to watch over the next couple of races to see what develops. And just like that, our start to our 2004 campaign, the year after our rookie season, is off to a wonderful and tremendous start. It was a non-points paying event, but I mean, at the end of the day, who really cares? It was all about the money, and we won the shootout, since we apparently don't have alcohol, so it's not the butt shootout. So we won the shootout. We won $200,955. We never see the $955. Hmm. You ever thought about that? Anyways, it's a win. It's a dub. The shootout is already in the rearview mirror. If you like today's video, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Be easy, everybody.